Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Life by the Horns podcast. My name is Justin Lee. I'm your host, and today I'm joined by Christina Mori. Um, Christina, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Christina is, trust me, one of the biggest moguls on this campus. Um, <laughs> event runner, um, DJ, as well as a multimedia um, chairs, chairs person. Will that be the term? Founder? Yeah, that's a founder. Founder? Yeah. Okay, right on. Um, you know, getting, you know, first into, you know, your most recent thing, would, would, that, would that be DJ? Yeah, I would, well, I know my, my, one of my most recent projects okay. for sure okay. would be DJ. Um, and it was because, are you familiar with Frothing Fest? Yes. Um, the the person who like runs it like hit me up and was like, hey, do you want to DJ for this event? And he didn't ask if I knew how to DJ. He just asked if I wanted to. And mm-hmm. I was like, I always kind of want to know how to DJ. So it's just like, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And then and then I was like, okay, well, now I need to learn how to DJ. So <laughs> I live with like a bunch of students um, at the co-op. So like, of course, like one of them had like a board that I can borrow, that I could have, that I borrowed. Mm-hmm. Um, I downloaded like the first free software that showed up. I figured it out. And then my friends were like, okay, but you can't just do it off your computer. Like you at least have to have like a board there. Yeah. So I figured out in like two nights and then I found out that I was opening. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's pretty easy. Like it's pretty easy, <laughs> but um, no, but I found out like, cause I was like posting the poster and everything. And my friends were like, oh my gosh, you're opening for Maddox. Mm-hmm. And like, I didn't know who that was. And then I listened to him and he was like, he was like with Drake when he was like 12 years old and like XXX Tentacion what? and stuff. And then, then I started freaking out a little yeah. bit. I was like, Bruh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said that. That's but I don't, and then I was like, n- I was like still super scared, like when I went to perform. But then like during it, like I just like I don't know, like it just comes to you, you know. Like I work well under pressure. Totally, totally. And I guess like, what was that moment like, kind of to know that you like, you know, from like I'm sure you were stressing, you know, from like you know I'm gonna DJ to like you know I'm learning how to DJ, um, up until you know that actual set call time. Yeah. How did you kind of deal with the stress, um, you know, throughout that entire process? Um. Well, I don't. I was like. I mean, I feel like I'm a really anxious person, so I was kind of, like, freaking out. Mm -hmm. But I had, like, a good group of friends with me there, and, like, I don't know, they were all hyping me up. They were Mm -hmm. just, like, everyone was just kind of, like, like, really waiting to see was I going to, like, bomb it or not because the person who, like, booked me didn't know that I had never DJed before. (laughs) So, like, the only people who knew were, like, my close friends. Mm -hmm. So they were just, like, really excited to see. So that kind of just, like, excited me to see, like, like, was it going to, like, end up really badly and was I going to embarrass myself in front of all these people or was it going to be, like was it going to go smoothly? But, um, yeah, I think just like having like a good group of friends with me there because if they weren't there like, and I was doing that alone, I would be like, I don't know. I probably wouldn't have. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Do you you feel like, you know, friends have always been like a strong, just like support system in your life? Yeah. I think I've, I've like just recently, I think I've had, I have like a really like strong group of friends and I live with so many people that it sometimes feels overwhelming to try and like make so many relationships and like, meaningful connections so i try to just like kind of focus on like keeping like friendships like a a couple people like close to me but Mm -hmm. of course like i'm friendly with everyone you know what i mean but i do feel like um friends are always just like they like really like make me feel more confident when they're around you know totally did you have a friend introduce you to like edm music or was that a passion you always had um well my sister like whenever she was my older sister she's um at another school now but um she started going to raves um and when i was still living at san antonio and she would tell me all about it and i was like that sounds crazy so there was like one summer that i came to, i came to visit her for like a weekend <laughs> and um it was it was my first ever rave it was in the tunnels have you ever been to the tunnel raves uh, so I've heard about the tunnel raves. I haven't gone just for my own safety yeah, concerns, yeah, that's fair, that's fair. anxieties yeah, that yeah, I have. Yeah. But I've heard that it's a dope show. They're they're crazy, but especially when they're put on, they're put on by these people. I think it's called One Two Two Productions. Okay. Where most of the time tunnel show tunnel raves have like just like normal PA systems, mm-hmm. just normal size. But these people have like these huge things Word. to where like the whole thing, like you can just feel everything. And it was my first ever rave, and um, that was the first time I was like, this is so cool. But yeah. I never really got into like, like thinking about DJing until like randomly my my older sister she's my mm-hmm. my biggest influence and like she inspires me but she randomly started DJing and then, and then I was like okay no I'm okay you well, know what you, I mean? yeah, yeah yeah I'll, I'll follow, follow big sis mm-hmm. footsteps for sure yeah um with um you know with DJing how, how many shows have you have you currently done since since your um since your since your start um I think I've done like maybe like four or five mm-hmm. um and then I don't know like it's uh, cause like I have like more opportunities to continue doing it, mm-hmm. but like sometimes I'm just like, 
I don't know like how serious I am about it, yeah. but like it's really fun. But then sometimes like I don't know what makes a DJ like a real DJ because like sometimes like I, I, I don't know like what makes a DJ a DJ, you know I, what I, I mean? I think it's the brand. You think? I, 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 would, I would say it's the brand and it's like, you know, it's, it's the moniker that yeah. you're putting on and that, you know, you, um, uh, you have like this relationship with the crowd where, you know, whenever you're on set, you're always, you know, creating a good, co your mission is to make a good time for them. Yeah. So it's like building that brand as, you know, the go-to person for a good time. Yeah. Well, that, that, I, I like the way that you put that because, because recently my friends are just calling me like, oh, I'm the clout DJ or whatever. Like people <laughs> only book you because they know who you are, but it's like, and. You know, like, it's still fun. Precisely. No, precisely. And I guess to that point, you know, what things have you felt the more integral to, like, building, you know, your brand? Instagram, for me personally. And I just, like, post, like, pretty unhinged. Like, and so I have a personal and then I have a meme account. I, I saw the meme account, yes. Yeah, the meme account mm -hmm. is, um, I have, like, a few other admins on there as well. Um, but people just know me as, like, someone who, like, I, I don't know, like I want to be taken seriously, but I also like don't want things to always ever be too serious because I feel like once things start getting too serious, like in the way that you like treat the way that you live, I mean, like, I don't know how to say it, but I always like to have fun. Mm -hmm. And like, um, I think, I think I hope people know me as like the person who's just like, I don't know, I, I, if I want to have fun, I want to see other people around me, like enjoying themselves totally, too, you know what I mean? Totally. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, as you speak to, you know, you, you know, want that relational people that you like, you know, you're this person that brings joy, um, creates magic um, to that Thank sense. You. Would you say you feed more off the crowd when you DJ or you want the crowd to feed off of you? Um, let's see. When I DJ, I like only sometimes like peak up, but I know it definitely feels better to have like more people like dancing and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but... I don't know. I think it's kind of like a symbiotic. I think that's the word. Like, yes. I, I appreciate like both parts of it, but I really, I really love seeing like people like dancing, mm -hmm. you know, like instead of just like standing around, like they're too cool. But so, but I guess that's also depends on like the music choice that's chosen. You know what I mean? Cause some music's just going to get people dancing. No, totally. Totally. Um, and I guess, you know, looking to like, you know, the biggest maybe like challenge, you know, you faced throughout this process of, you know, growing into, you know, a DJ growing to know your board, you know, what, what, what would that be? Um, oh, I still don't even own a board. I just like ask around and borrow it for, cause I'm like, I don't know. I ask around and borrow and then mm -hmm. like, I'm going to like master it on like someone else's board. And then maybe if I'm, if I want to like continue getting into it, get like, like try it on like more serious stuff. There was this one time, I think it was like the second or third time I was supposed to DJ. It was like it's in the tunnels. And one of my friends had his like really expensive board mm -hmm. that like, I didn't know how to use it at all. And then... I just thought it was going to sound really bad. So I just, I didn't do it because I didn't do it because I was like, what? it was going to, okay. I, I, I want people know that like, I'm not that serious of a DJ right now, mm -hmm. but I don't want them to think that I'm like, like really messing with everybody like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like no, I want I, them to at least think that I've been trying because I have been putting in some work. To you respect know? your work. You don't want to go out there just to do a set to do a set. Yeah. I and, and so like, I don't know. Everyone's always stoked to have like a longer set too. So like it wasn't a big deal, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know. It, it made me want to like, just for the next one, like actually, like make sure everything was like I knew how to do things, you know. For well, sure. So, would you say, um, you know, DJing is taking up the most, like real estate in your mind right now, or is you know all you know being that you know creating events and you know um, the, the 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 multimedia company? Mm -hmm. Which one would you say is the most prominent right now? I would say currently, um, as much as I love like DJing, um, my the biggest thing that I'm like up to right now is. Um, like I love curating events mm -hmm. um, because when whenever I get like full creative like freedom to like choose how like I don't know because with, with certain bands and certain DJs that you choose you know oh I have like a good idea of like how the crowd's gonna react and the crowd that's gonna come and I think it's like it's it's really fun to see like especially whenever everything comes together just everyone just like smiling you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's it's a really cool feeling and um, and yeah I, so right now it's it's like like during events and stuff and and like one of my dreams would be to to have like you know what warp tour is warp tour no it was like this like alternative music festival in like okay. the late 90s early 2000s that would like travel it would go ha happen in the summer and like travel all 50 states Fuck yeah. um and it would be like a bunch of like big bands into like kids from 
like random like Wyoming or something mm-hmm. like got to see their favorite band I don't know it's it sounded really cool and I was I was I've been like really inspired by that and it's like something that like it would be one of my dreams to do one day like something like that absolutely um you know event running was that something that you saw yourself doing um prior to getting to college at all no when before I got into college like I honestly thought I was just gonna like have like some sort of office job mm-hmm. and I remember I first started studying business and there was like this one class that I took where they were teaching us how to dress. And I don't know, there's something about, like as small as that is, I was just like, to dictate something like that, like every day, like I, I feel like, like w- I wanna be more free than that and I wanna like mm-hmm. explore more things that, I don't know, I, I am, I'm like bad with authority and like rules and stuff like that. You know fair, what I mean? Fair, fair, fair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I first went into college, like I had no idea what I was gonna do. Mm-hmm. And I honestly still have no idea what I'm gonna do. I have a, like, some more of a, an idea, but like, um, I, I would have never imagined like at all Doing this. that I would be in like a position like this. You, know, and you mentioned earlier that you started off as a business major um, and then transitioned you know, into English. Would you say that um, the event running and that passion for you know, creating events is you kind of feeding that, that, business, um, that business desire um, within, within you? Um, I would say I've always been like, kind of an entrepreneurial spirit like i was that kid that was selling reselling chips and stuff yeah, like in absolutely. the bus and stuff sure. um and so i've always been kind of like i always like make little bracelets or something and i'm selling that and i'm always just like have a little side hustle always going um i don't really know what that is but um definitely i definitely like is part of the drive of like what like um continues my my like i don't know like to continue expanding, finding different the ways. Passion, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunger. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. exactly. Um, and you know, with um, you know, event running, you know, what was your first event? And, you know, could you take me through like how that felt? You know, setting that all up. Yeah. So the first event I ever threw was with my friend Izzy from the UK. Um, it was at Pearl Street Co-op. It was um Halloween, and um, it was it was everything went smoothly. Like everything was fine. But I remember. The thing is with like running the sound for the bands, mm-hmm. I didn't like fully think about like that people cared how it sounded. Like I just <laughs> people was, might care. You know what I mean? care yeah. Well, I just I was just kind of like, oh, like the bands are here, and there's things to there's a soundboard like everything set. You know what I mean? I didn't because mm-hmm. I didn't really know much about any of it, and so it was just kind of like figuring it out as we went, and so um, it would just be like people who lived at the house running the sound, but no one really knew what they were doing either so mm-hmm. it would sound really bad but i remember there was this one band it was like their first i won't name drop but it was like that was their last show because w- the drummer got like so drunk that he like okay so the singer like introduced everybody mm-hmm. and then the band was about to start getting the drummer gets up from his chair but first he pulls off both of his boots and me I w- me and my friend were running sound i don't know how to run sound either no. and he didn't really either <laughs> yeah. but he p- takes off both his boots and throws them at us and we look at each other and we start laughing and but he doesn't stop there because then he takes off his socks and throws them over at us and we're like okay this is gonna be yeah, interesting because he gets yeah. up from his seat no, Lord. and we're like no, Lord what's he gonna do and he goes up and reintroduces everyone <laughs> that's what i'm saying and yeah. then he goes back down and starts playing and then i had to like go run away li- not run away but i had to go like do some security or something mm-hmm. and then i i came back and i was asking my friend jules who was on sound i was like what happened and he was like yeah the band just like quit playing halfway through and like they started yelling at him and so then i heard that he was in the parking lot and they they beat him up and, but then there was this other band who they're like these like really sweet like they're like I don't know. I don't even know if they give like straight edge vibes like but they were they had just like eaten bad food and they had food poisoning. Oh, so while one band was like one of the mm-hmm. all of them were yeah. beating up this one guy, <laughs> this uh, this other band, all of them are throwing up in the alleyway. That's, yeah, that's and great. then so there was just like a crowd of like on goers like looking around mm-hmm. and they're like, what's going yeah, on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's just like little stories like that. I just think are just kind of funny. But. Totally. totally. I mean, like what's some, uh, you know, what's been like the biggest thing you've learned? throughout this process of from your first event, you know, to now. Yeah. I think, I think like the biggest thing for me is, um, I don't know. I think that like, um, what's the word? Like working in teams with people that have similar visions, Mm -hmm. it can be really helpful. Like at first I, I kind of like was like, I was shy to the idea, but like, I feel like whenever you find people who have kind of like similar, like, ideas and stuff like you can get more done you know what i mean no, totally 
when you find people that you know are in line with your views and you are all fighting for the same thing it's right. you, know, you can't you can't be with people that you know you want them uh you don't want you want volunteers you yeah know, you don't want you know people that just don't want to do it yeah um, exactly for sure um looking into um you know event running um you know as something you want to do in the future is that something you really want to um you know do as you as, as you graduate yeah so that's why like sometimes i like wake up in the middle of the night i'm like what am i doing like i don't know because like I, I i don't really plan on using my english degree like further than just like being better at writing like i like mm -hmm. writing poetry and stuff like that but um with event running i would love to like it would be cool to even have like my own venue or like continue booking um i manage like a band right now mm -hmm. um it's like the first who, time I've who ever do you done. manage uh they're called party van okay. and i'm supposed to i'm supposed to book their tour but i've never booked a tour before so i'm like kind of figuring that out oh, yeah. but um yeah so that would be cool i don't i think i think it'd be cool to stay around in austin just because of like um it's so it's such like music friendly like hub mm -hmm. um but like I have like friends in New York and stuff that are like booking shows, but I feel like it's kind of like a different, it's like a different scene. I don't know. No, no, New York's definitely, yeah. definitely a different scene than Austin. For sure. For sure yeah. Um, how do you manage, you know, all these things at once? Um, you know, be it you know booking shows for yourself to DJ, booking shows, you know, for for the day, for the band you're managing to do to feel and perform, or even just um, you know putting on these events as a whole. You know, how do you manage um, any stress that comes about? Um, I feel like the stress. I'm like so busy all the time like booking these things and like organizing them that I just kind of like Continue to keep my mind off it by like making myself more busy mm -hmm. um, But then like like I was saying like sometimes I'll just be laying in bed and I'm like I like need to take a break You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. but so like that's why I'm happy it's summer But I have to take like some summer classes to like mm -hmm. get some credits, right? But I don't know. I'm like I'm pretty stressed all the time You could just be you know chilling writing papers, you know doing fuck all on the weekends But you know you're choosing to really go out there um, you know, just be about, you know, yourself, you know, doing something whether that's, you know, for yourself or, you know, for others. Where does that all come from? Um, I, I grew up with like some pretty strict parents and like I wasn't really I didn't really go out a lot or like, I don't know. I really just spent a lot of time in my room. Um, like sometimes I would like hang out with friends and stuff. But I think I've always had a desire to like, um, I guess, like be... I don't know I've always like like whenever I was younger like I always like, kind of like really wanted to kind of experience like these events where there's like a bunch of people around and everyone like up like parties you mm -hmm. know like mm -hmm. shows and stuff like that um and I don't know I, I also feel like um I don't I don't know like I do I do feel very deeply on on like the people that come to the events like it's really important to me that like Mm -hmm. I, d I don't want to hear like anybody's like having a bad time or anything no, like totally. that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, where did it come from? I don't know. I've always liked having fun. Hey, I guess. simple you as know that. What I no, mean? Simple as that. Um, but yeah. Oh, you know, you know what? There, I met this guy in San Antonio. He was like this mural artist mm -hmm. and graffiti artist. Um, um, shout out Suffer. But he he told me that um, he. Oh, I listened to a podcast because I was I was doing a mural with him. But he had told me that um, it well in the in the in the podcast that I heard like afterwards because I was asking about his story and stuff mm -hmm. and he was like I've said it so many times like yeah. just listen to this and I did and at the end like one of the things he was like one of the things because one of the things I want to be remembered for is like connecting people and like it's really for me it's really to hear him say that was like really special because like it's really special to have connections with people when it's like you both are kind of like doing the same thing and like you end up connecting and like now like you have like another group of people to be around and like he was definitely one of those people who was just like always connecting people like he would be like do you want a job and i'd be like yeah sure mm -hmm. and like i would get a job mm -hmm. you know what i mean but um that was like really um touching for me because like i think like a week or two after that he he suffered from a stroke and like he's oh. been in the hospital ever since wow yeah but um sorry to hear that no, yeah, it's, it's, I think, I think he's, like, doing better now, but, um, when I was also in San Antonio, like, a lot of the, like, the artists and stuff there, they just had, like, a lot of, like, I was working for a cultural arts center called San Antonio Cultural Arts Center, and, um, I was writing for their community newspaper there, and, um, it was just really interesting to see how much this side of San Antonio, like, really valued mm -hmm. community, and it was cool to see, like, 
the power of of like what like certain murals and stuff like that could do mm. to bring people together um and like represent because they would like have like like little meetings where people would like vote on like what they wanted to see and stuff yeah. like that and so I, th I think like also things like that like seeing other ways that communities are being built um i i think i, I really like the thought of like having communities and like Communi community oriented persons yeah. you know, that you know you build you feed off of uh, feed off of people mm -hmm. totally um throughout this process you know that you've you know created and curated events for people was, was there any like failures you would say in time like things like didn't go you know as as you wanted them to be and you know was there anything you really like took away from that yeah so like this this past south by we were supposed to have um a show where i normally have it at pearl mm -hmm. but um something happened like we we didn't get a permit in time or something like mm -hmm. that so but i had this huge lineup and like these two brothers from new york were gonna help me and my sister like put the show together mm -hmm. and like everyone was already booked everyone was already confirmed like no one knew like behind the scenes that we were panicking because we didn't have a venue to put yeah. them um and so it was kind of like the two brothers were just kind of like i think like we should maybe just like call it off because already too much money's been put into it mm -hmm. and me and my sister were like like we can't give up you know yeah no not at all no yeah you gotta, you gotta keep pushing you gotta right keep pushing. and so i don't know at times i felt like m like continue to push was like dur during that moment when i was just like continuing to like look for places and even then like trying to convince people in my house like we need to have it like trust this is gonna be like it's gonna be an awesome time mm -hmm. but um i just felt like maybe i was doing too much but then that's the that's the event that we ended up finding a space shout out at house of commons but that's the one that got like uh the paper magazine like write up about yes. it and yes. we had like a bunch of people there like um like it was it was like if that didn't happen like i don't think my the my event organizing like situation would mm -hmm. be kind of like it, farther it, it, along it lost that credibility right mm -hmm. and so um i think like that was like a really big thing for me that is just like even when it feels like like you just have to like push some doors through yeah, like no, totally, sometimes like totally. it might like get your shit done. right and uh, at first i felt like that was too much but then i don't know it that's was a, it was a lesson to me, I think, for sure. speaking to that paper magazine feature you know just take me to that feeling um of like you know getting your event mentioned in a magazine well at first it was kind of disappointing because they only put the brothers names in yeah and so, <laughs> what? Right, <laughs> what? so i was like that's not right well so then i was like I texted my sister and we were like pretty bummed about it and we were just kind of like we texted the brothers and they're like oh like we'll text them see and i texted my friends like my girlfriends and they were mm -hmm. pissed yeah and they took, rightfully so they took it to like social media and i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna go that far mm -hmm. but once they did like they tagged me or whatever <laughs> so I'll repost yeah. it. but then they're like yo chill like they're gonna fix it like take that down mm -hmm. but like one of my best friends fabiola like she said like her she put a sassy ass repost yeah. and um <laughs> and then he, he the guy messaged her and was like don't worry we're gonna fix it in the morning yeah. like we'll take yeah, it down yeah, yeah, like, but like and she was, yeah right and she told me she's like i'm not taking it down until he fixes it and then they fixed it and they spelled my name wrong and i was like no nah, it's okay i was like it's fine it's fine but then i thought about it and i was like no nah, they went through all that and they couldn't yeah. spell my name yeah, wrong. No, so i just let me message them that, again that's I was like, why. please yeah. spell my yeah, name please wrong. at least like but no that besides that once it was all said and done like it, it still felt awesome. I was like, this mm -hmm. is so sick. Yeah, I mean, that's like, sick. Right, because the other thing with throwing the shows is, like, I don't think, like, people don't take it seriously. They mm -hmm. think I'm just, like, throwing parties and, like. And I don't think you did it necessarily, like, for that, that notoriety. Right, Of, no. like, you know, I'm Christina Mori. I'm yeah. putting on these fucking bomb-ass events. Like, you better Dude, come thanks. through. Like, yeah. it was just more so for, you know, a, a belief in community or a passion yeah. you know, for community. No, I definitely did not. I wasn't even expecting, like, any write-ups or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. like. To see someone come, an outsider come, and like, like kind of like put it into words, like mm -hmm. what happened, and like they they saw like the community that came right. together was just like, I felt like mm -hmm. people see it as like something like a little bit bigger than that, you know. Totally. You totally. Know? And I feel like a lot of creativity, you know, goes into these events. Um, do you take anything from your UT degree or anything from UT that you're learning? into i guess you know your your activities outside outside of school yeah so like some of my um my readings and stuff like like brecht on theater for example okay. is he it's kind of like different literature kind of talks about that that my class that i've read in class like some of it talks about like how theater can be taken like brecht on theater can be taken and used kind of like 
and and it can be pushed boundaries and like art can be changed in different ways and like things like that I, I take and I use like things that I read to like kind of like inspire like okay well how can I use kind of like the wording and stuff here and like I don't know like use no, it to take, inspire me no, actually, you know? what, what can you what can you like just take the modus yeah from, from the writings and um you know establish that in your own life right totally and then as well like working with kvrx the radio station mm -hmm. for the school has been um really helpful as well because i didn't know how to like book professionally like or work with real mm -hmm. venues or anything be before like i worked with them because it was just mm -hmm. kind of like okay tunnel show co-op show like warehouse you know what i mean and so having that opportunity as well has given me like the opportunity to figure out how to use like proper like language and emails and stuff right. and like how to reach out right. and all, all the terminology and stuff like that totally. and so in terms of, like creating you know wh what does your creative process kind of look like because uh, just with DJing you know creating a set or you know as you go through the set then more so to like you know event running like you know with, I mean <laughs> the event had you know baby oil wrestling um, yeah. and a litany of other um, you know cool activities what, what does that creative process look like for you? Um, I would say like I'm pretty disorganized and kind of like scattered everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, I'll have like an idea and like I'll write it in my notes app and my notes app is just kind of like so many random mm -hmm. things that have nothing to, like I'll have to like search through or I'll just have like a piece of paper and just like write things and scratch it off and this and that. But also I, I get like a lot of like um, input from my sister. I always ask her like, oh, what do you think about this? And then she's like my you know my my old i see her as like my cooler older sister so mm -hmm. it's just like um like if she thinks it's cool like i think it's cool but i mean i also use my own like discretion of like um i don't know i also the thing about throwing the shows is like i like to have things that are like a little bit more than just just a regular show because in yeah. austin like you can see a show any time of the day any time mm -hmm. of the week like if you have like at least some sort of theme something that people feel like they can like also contribute to like let's say even something as simple as like dressing up to something or something like that like um i think that it's i i yeah i don't know my creative process is is very much like i'll get an idea and it needs to be written down or i will never remember it no i feel it's I mean, artists yeah, in yeah. itself are very sporadic people mm. um how did how do you think you transitioned from someone that was going to be you know in finance to some that's more um you know outside of school based you know artist based um you know creativity based um, I remember my mom had this friend who had a daughter who was working in finance and I, I called her one day and I was just like, hey, like I have some questions about like how you feel about finance and everything like 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 for be real with me for a second. Like I know it pays good and everything, but do you like it? Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah. And I was like, do you have fun? And she's like, yeah. And, and she was like, I was like, no, like, do you actually have fun? Like, do you, <laughs> yeah, are you having be, fun? Be, be fun yeah. And she was like, yeah. And then I was like. I can't do this like mm -hmm. I, I need to like because I was doing something that I wasn't gonna enjoy and then and then like like I said working with all the um, being able to have the opportunity to work with San Antonio Culture Arts I got to like interview a lot of like local artists or, like m like painters and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so talking to them and like kind of seeing like um, I don't know I was this one mural artist that I interviewed his name was Rudy um, uh, he said that it was during an interview where it kind of snapped for me. I was like, he just said something so inspires, inspiring. It was just kind of like, if you don't follow your dreams now, you're gonna like look back one day. And he wasn't even talking to me specifically. Like he was mm -hmm. just like answering questions. Yeah. If you don't follow them now, like you're gonna look back now and you're just gonna like regret everything. And like, he was like, it's just more fulfilling to see where kind of like your dreams take you right now. Mm -hmm. And even if you fail. Yeah. 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 I think so. I think so. Um, but failure is also really scary, you know. Mm -hmm. But I guess I ha I haven't had like a, a big enough like fall yet. Yeah. Um, to to be like, uh, what am I doing? You know, if a pitfall does come, you know, yeah. how do you think you're equipped to handle that? Um. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> no clue. I think, I think um, the community that I've built, like um the people that i don't know i, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to like like build different connections with all sorts of people mm -hmm. um and that that kind of helps like i i would hope like i could find like some i don't i have no idea because i i don't know but hopefully it doesn't happen hopefully yeah <laughs> hopefully. we'll see hopefully. we'll see no but i was actually thinking about the, that this morning 
because I don't know, like a degree is very like you have a degree, like you're good to go, like mm -hmm. in certain paths. Yeah. And so that's why, like, sometimes I don't know, I, I, I get scared with choosing something that's you kind of have to pave your own way, you know? No, totally. It's not as, you know, promised as a degree is. Right. Um, in that sense. You know, has there been any, um, you know, any, any self doubt that, like, you know, I should just really, like, button up my degree, maybe get a double minor yeah. or a dual degree yeah. um, since I'm at UT? Um, you know, have, have you felt any feelings of that? I, like, doubt myself every single day. And, like, I, like, every single day I doubt myself, like, about, like, what am I doing and this and that. But then, like, I, I look at, like, kind of, like, all the progress and, like, how far I've come. And, like, I think about my the way that I feel whenever I'm not doubting myself mm -hmm. and I'm confident in, like, kind of, like, the things that I've created um, along the way that I try and push it aside. But, like, that self-doubt is always there. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. We'll see. I've Yeah. I But I do think about, like, I should maybe get a minor or something like as well, but uh, I mean, I mean, personally, I don't think. I mean, yeah. I think you're, I think you're doing so much, you know, just Thank outside you. of it. Um, that you know, I think you know, so much I've learned through this, you know, whole process and this project is that the degree is important, but I think what's the most important is your time in college, because you just have so much free time to branch out and do things, you know, like like create events, and then if you create so many events, you know, and you're good at it, it's like, well, I've already found myself a job, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, do you think that this event running at least will be a job for when you want to graduate? Um, I, I would, I, I would love to like create my own like little like company or something or like be part of some like booking organization or something like that. But mm -hmm. most of all, I really like to have like my own creative freedom with stuff like that. But that's what I, that's what I hope for. But um, we'll see. Totally, totally. Um, and then just getting into your last project, you know, Worm News, which is relatively new. Yeah. So we started that. It was based off my my meme account, mm -hmm. and I had these like friends who follow it, and they would they showed up to my. It was like one of my. They showed up to one of my DJing events, mm -hmm. and um, they started doing the worm like all across the floor, yeah. and it was just like really <laughs> obnoxious because mm -hmm. it was just like everyone's like standing dancing, and then they started doing the worm, and then. They texted me and one of them was like, um, oh, like every time you do a DJ event, we're going to come and do the worm. I was like, that's so <laughs> that's cool. Good that's good yeah. Friends, yeah. And then they were taking like cool footages and stuff. And like one of them like edits videos really cool. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you call it? I, I saw like the, the videos that they were making. I was like, that's so cool. I was like, we should make that something like we can make it. And they're like, yeah, we were thinking about that, too. So I had a little meeting. We had a meeting together and we were just kind of like um, we all had kind of the same idea. We kind of wanted to just like continue to document the scene because I mean, it, it's we love the music and it's interesting as yeah. well. But like the crowd can sometimes just be like just as like fun and like yeah. entertaining. You know what I mean? Um, and it also kind of like, um, like it'll be something fun to look back on when we're all like older to see like everyone in the scene. You know what yeah. I mean? No, totally. Um, but yeah, I think w we eventually want to start like also like um, kind of like highlighting like we've done some like interviews with like local like artists and stuff like that too. But. Um, for now, it's just kind of like it's a little funny, like passion project, I guess. Yeah, fuck yeah, no, it's good. It's good to have passion projects. Keep keeps you sane. Yeah, right. In that sense, um, with it though, like, where did you guys like kind of like get the idea, like, hey, this could be something that's like really cool. I think it was just like we all just were kind of like thinking the same thing. Um, I don't. I th I think um, I think Mason. He's the he's the guy who like edits most of the videos. Mm -hmm. He's just really good at editing videos, and we just kind of were like, like let's just Fuck it. continue like, con like filming these like, cause crazy things happen at like mm -hmm. these events. Like, yeah. like for our last one, there's like this footage of like we find a tree and it's being brought into the rave, and there's what? just like everyone's just like, <laughs> there's like like 15 people holding onto the tree, mm -hmm. just like parading it around, mm -hmm. and then they're like trying to like put the tree back in the it's just like yeah. crazy well, things the, the happen. drummer getting his ass beats crazy yeah <laughs> right and like it's just like you wouldn't even believe the things that happen like unless you see it and it's just kind of like it's funny mm -hmm. and uh i think we all like recognize that and people get so excited whenever like 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 random people are just mm -hmm. like hey can i ask you a question you know what i mean and yeah, the microphone's yeah. in their face no, totally. you know? No, it, it really reminds me a lot like um, MTV kind of when it first came out um, and I felt like almost that like MTV or like there's a lack of coverage um, as it is just for like college events in that mm -hmm. sense um, with people just having like organic times you yeah. know, as like you know young dumb fun college kids yeah. do you guys feel like you're maybe like filling that role or you know would you agree with that that's a really I didn't think of that but I've seen like some MTV like 
like things along those mm-hmm. lines and yeah i would say so because it's like it's just like i don't know it's definitely like right in there and that's like even the the hosts are like we pass what we do is like anyone can really be a host like mm-hmm. if someone randomly is being interviewed and then all of a sudden they like walk off and start interviewing someone else like the the cameras will just follow we yeah. won't be like hey give yeah. it back you know what yeah. i mean like so it's like everyone gets to be a part of like mm-hmm. interviewing everybody and anybody and yeah. so i think when people feel like more like involved like no it's, it's very organic i think i think honestly it's a really great idea um, like a great just like you know whole process of documenting you know what, what it is to be in college yeah right totally totally Thank for you. sure um and yeah um i guess last things you know as it relates to you know where you want to be just you know after you graduate you know what is that dream job you think my dream job would be um i think like creating that like music festival that i talked about earlier something like that would be just like that's like one of my biggest my one of my biggest dreams that or like running my own music venue um i think that would be also really cool because like you get to have all like the creative vision Mm -hmm. and say um It'd be cool to be like a tour manager. I love being on the road. Fuck yeah. Um, I don't know. There's that. Those are some of like the things that I would love to be um, or do. And with Worm News, like I think that also has like a lot of possibilities to go far. So mm-hmm. it, it'll be cool to see like kind of like what comes about totally. everything. And is it really like mindset? You would say that like kind of like sticks with you. Um, I just I think like just not to take everything too seriously. Like um. I guess, um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. There's nothing, nothing stays in the mind. Like for me, at least I could, I can name like three or so. Like yeah. stagnancy is death. Like if I stop working, I'm worth nothing. Oh, that's so um, real. Or like, yeah. um, I had a friend mentioned like, you know, um, don't, don't do things that will add more stress if you're already stressed. Like don't try to fight stress with things that are just going to make you more stressed. Think. Um, Dang, I don't feel so wise right now. It's not even wise. I mean, no, it, it could be as simple as like wake up and do shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah, like if if, if you, I would say like when I have an idea, like I really want to like go and do it. And like the longer that I wait on it, like like the less that it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And I think like um, the power of like trying to like combat any self doubt and just like do what mm-hmm. makes you happy, mm-hmm. like regardless of what people say, because like people will say things you know but Mm -hmm. if what you're doing like is like you see a vision like it has potential if if you see it and you continue to see it like you can get you can literally do whatever you want i feel like i feel like dreams are pretty capable and you know would that be your advice to somebody that's maybe undeciding on what they want to do and they have like you know the structured corporate you know path that they're looking at maybe something that's a bit more um you know less um you know tight and sealed in terms of like you know it's like you know it's it's pathway to success would that be the same kind of advice yeah i would just say like put your toes in like all of the different waters and like just try and figure out like which one like makes you the most happiest like you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. and then whatever it is just like roll with it and continue to roll with it totally would you say you're happy right now yeah i'm I'm stressed but i'm happy Mm -hmm. i i like it's like it's like a fun it's like a fun type of stress do you know what i mean because like it just I, I like kind of feel like an adrenaline and every time because it's just like like a, another show another show I don't know totally. I yeah. like it um thank you you know so much for being here thanks today thanks for having um, me big, big round of applause big thank round of you, applause thank you um so everyone um sitting and watching um you know go up and get get up and go do something <laughs> <laughs> no seriously though um I mean I think you're just a testament to the fact that you know you don't have to be in the structured um finance or you know like you know role or you know archetype that you know. If it's not for you, don't do it. Do what'll make you happy so that, you know, as you said, you know, with those regrets, like 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you're on a whole different trajectory. And you're, right. you're, all, you're thinking about what could have been. Exactly. What could have been, for sure. Well, yeah. Again, thank you to everybody you for, for being me. here. Um, and yeah, um, you know, keep it, keep it kicking and uh, take care. Toodles.